Good afternoon everybody, welcome back to IndyCar. I'm Gordon Ross. Uh, today it's precisely three weeks, uh, exactly three weeks in fact, uh, until Brexit, until Brexit actually happens. So three weeks away, 21 days uh, until the United Kingdom as we recognise it uh, will be destroyed. And it's going to destroy itself really, and we all know why. But let's look at some of the background. We've heard Alistair Jack, the uh, Secretary of State for Scotland, saying that why would we want to destroy, as he put it, uh, one of the world's most successful unions of all time? Well, you can answer that quite easily because Alistair Jack is right in one respect, that for two centuries the union was highly successful and Scotland benefited greatly in the 18th and 19th centuries uh, from riding on the coattails of aggressive British colonisation and the exploitation of those colonies. And Scotland got wealthy on the back of that. We all know that, for example, Glasgow, where I am today, uh, most of the fantastic uh, uh, architecture that we see around us in Glasgow from the, the last centuries, from the 19th century, um, was largely built on wealth uh, created on the backs of slave labour in tobacco plantations in Virginia and other places. So we know that Scotland benefited from this so-called highly successful union, but it only did that for 200 years. In the 20th century, particularly from World War I onwards, Scotland began to decline, and the decline continued dramatically all the way through the 20th century. After World War II, it became even worse as the, the co former colonial power of the United Kingdom as, as an empire collapsed, and one by one, uh, the countries which Britain had aggressively taken over uh, began to win their freedom uh, and got back to being independent states again, which left Britain with the rump of empire, basically Northern Ireland, Scotland and Wales, as its only real sources of additional income from its colonial uh, past, which meant that Scotland was, for the last hundred years or so, neglected. And it had been neglected up until 1997, when the people of Scotland voted, 75% uh, of, of Scotland voted in favour of reopening our parliament, of, of basically having our own government again. And that started in 1997. So over 20 years ago, uh, the Scottish Parliament reopened. It reopened um, as a, a kind of gift, if you like, from the, the, the British government. But it was a gift uh, with a limited amount of power. As we all know, um, the Scottish Parliament, the Scottish Government, has a tiny amount of power. It has power over all the things which don't matter too much uh, to government in London. Things like the health service, education, the roads, you know, stuff like that. Everyday things that Scotland uh, can do for itself, a bit like a gigantic uh, local council. So England didn't seem to bother about that, Westminster was okay with it, uh, as long as the Scottish Nationalists didn't gain a majority in Parliament. And so the Labour Party designed a system of voting which was designed specifically to prevent the SNP from ever gaining a majority. And then, what do you know, the SNP broke it and gained a majority in 2015 and swept us, everybody else before them. Everything was, was terrific. Uh, sorry, not not in 2015, it was before that. Uh, and it's gone on from strength to strength. The SNP has won mandate after mandate after mandate after mandate. Five independence mandates on the bounce have been won by the SNP. Now, as I say, Scotland was neglected all the way up until 1997. And what changed was that Scottish people began to wake up and realise that the union that they were a member of was not what they thought it was. It wasn't a union of equals, uh, it wasn't a successful union anymore because of, although Scotland had become wealthy as a result of it in the previous two centuries, the 20th century and the massive amount of warfare that went on in that virtually bankrupted the United Kingdom. In fact, it did bankrupt the United Kingdom and we were still paying back massive loans to the United States uh, through uh, right up till the end of the 20th century, in fact. So now Scotland is in a situation where it has recovered to some degree from the massive deindustrializations of the Thatcher era in the early 80s uh, to the point where it is beginning to become successful again. And it, it's become the most successful exporting part of the United Kingdom, has been for approximately the last 30 or 40 years. 
uh, and Scotland has been making profits ever since its foreign currency. But what happens next is the British government now decides that Scotland um, has to come out of the, the European Union because England wants to leave the European Union. England seems to think that that is the, the way uh, to fix all their ills, uh, except that Scotland didn't vote for it. As we know, Scotland voted heavily against Brexit and continues to heavily oppose Brexit even now. And we're only three weeks away from Brexiting as, as I'm speaking to you now. In the process of preparing this programme, uh, I took a, a great big look at a lot of the laws governing the Union. And at no point in the Union uh, does it say anything about Scotland not being allowed to leave the Union. There is, there's no thing that says you may not leave the Union. There's nothing that says that Scotland must stay shackled to, uh, to England as it does something so ridiculously uh, self-abusive as Brexit. There is nothing in law that says Scots must remain in the Union of the United Kingdom. Uh, in fact, the, there is a lot of international law which states quite the opposite. In fact, even the United Kingdom itself agreed to uh, international law in the case of Kosovo. If you remember, during the, the war in the Balkans, um, Kosovo decided to secede from former Yugoslavia. In fact, all of the Balkan states seceded from the former Yugoslavia. But Britain agreed that a country which was seceding did not have to ask permission from the country it was seceding from. It also did not have to abide by the laws of the country from which it was trying to secede. In fact, no, uh, Britain basically was saying that in order to succeed successfully from anywhere, you cannot be forced to abide by the rules of the country that you're trying to secede from because to do so would cause your secession to fail in the first place and would be plain, plainly ridiculous. So they accepted an international law that Kosovo had the right to exist. And the only caveat that is put on the independence of a state which has seceded from a, a previous body, in this case the UK, is that other countries should recognize that new state. And if that recognition is forthcoming from enough of these countries, then it is established that that country is independent. So it can declare its independence the state it is seceding from doesn't have to recognise it, but if everybody else recognises it, it makes it impossible for the former state to keep any hold over it, because internationally it has become accepted by every other country around it that this seceding body is now a state. And this is what Scots need to remember. When we have an independence vote, we don't have to ask any permission to do so. Uh, under international law, which the U United Kingdom has actually helped to write, we are quite happily entitled to have a referendum, a fully democratic, lawful referendum under Scottish law, which in which we can vote for independence or not. And if we win that vote, uh, and more, most of us want to have independence, more than 50%, then we can announce our independence. We can state quite boldly, Scotland is now de facto an independent state. The people have spoken and we then have to ask other countries to recognise us. Now does anybody seriously believe that the, the European Union would deny Scotland uh, a return to its in initial statehood should we have a fully democratic vote to that effect? I don't believe a single country would demur from uh, recognising Scotland as an individual country again. The United Kingdom would be severely pissed off. Uh, the, the British government would, would be incandescent. But under a law which they actually helped to write, we are entitled to do this. Now, I believe, I believed in the past that one of the reasons that the SNP was proceeding down the particular path that they're going on the moment was because they believed that um, our right to vote on an independence question like this was reliant on... Um, Scotland being recognised legally still as a country. And that is slightly true. I mean, you could go down that route and predicate the whole thing in a court action which says uh, England must recognise that Scotland is still a country. But that's fraught with danger and it could take years to sort that out. Far better to have the vote on independence without the permission. Permission is not something we need. We don't need the Section 30 order, which isn't a permission anyway. 
um, we can simply have this uh, this contest between staying in the Union uh, and going our own way and returning back to being part of the, the European Union as we, we want to be. And that question can be settled legally in Scotland with a referendum run by the Scottish Parliament. Not the Scottish Government, run by the Scottish Parliament and Scottish local authorities. Once that is done, then that establishes the will of the people. And that's a democratic vote. Whether England likes it or not, whether it has anything to do with their constitutional laws or not, is irrelevant. Because their constitution, their rules, they make them up, right? We don't have any say in what they do. And yet, they have a huge say in everything that we do. And clearly that is not right for two countries to be in such a huge imbalance of power is an unnatural state. So my, my belief is that we should, and I believe hopefully that the SNP agree with me here, that uh, we will hold our independence referendum. And my guess is that it will be held in the 700th anniversary year of the declaration of the founding of this country. And they are both declaration in, uh, <clears throat> pardon me, in 1320, uh, was sent in the spring of that year to the Pope, um, asking for Scotland to be recognised and asking for King Robert the First of Scotland to be recognised as the monarch of Scotland, as the King of Scots. But also for the people of Scotland, the burghers of Scotland, the nobles of Scotland, who declared themselves to be an independent state, but also critically claimed sovereignty for the people, not for the crown. In other words, the, the document uh, known as the Arbroath Declaration clearly stated that the Scottish people reserved the right to kick out any kings who didn't uh, protect them from England, basically, who didn't protect them from invasion or who colluded with their enemies to sell them out. So clearly stated in 1320 that Scotland was a kingdom, that it was virtually on the brink of becoming a democracy as we know it today because the people were uh, above the king. They were, they were above, so the sovereignty rested with the people of the country, not with its leadership. So the founding document, uh, with its 700th anniversary coming up this year, uh, that, that anniversary seems to me the best time to have a referendum. So that we vote on the precise day, 700 years to the day from which Scotland proclaimed its original independence. Because the day of that document's uh, sending to the Pope in 1320 was officially Scotland's Independence Day. Uh, historically established the country, it founded the country as uh, an identity, as a people, if you like, as a region, as a clearly defined region. And because of that, I think it's impossible for anybody to argue in court that Scotland isn't a country and doesn't have the right to self-determination. And under the, the laws, international laws um, from the International Court of Justice, which the United Kingdom is a signatory to, the United Kingdom recognises the right of people to self-determination as well, under the, um, under the conditions that I mentioned earlier, where we're not bound by the rules of the United Kingdom on how we vote or when we vote. None of those things are true. We may vote any time we like uh, to leave the UK, and we have always had this right. It's just that we've been lied to, there has been a smoke screen, uh, there's been a lot of smoke and mirrors to try and confuse you into thinking that the Union was somehow permanent. It isn't. It's never been permanent. It's like the Soviet Union, it wasn't permanent either. Um, nothing is permanent. Everything can change. So my <laughs> my point of my broadcast today is to remind us all, before the march tomorrow, what we're actually marching for. We're marching to demonstrate the fact that we are a nation, we are many peoples, but we are one nation. And the people of this country are the bosses of this country. Not Westminster, not the Queen, not any king, not any leader. The people of this country are the bosses of this country. And that is what Ian Blackford has been saying repeatedly in Westminster for the last few days. The people of Scotland are sovereign. They will have their independence referendum. And if they win that referendum, we will declare ourselves independent and return to become a, a European country again. So this is now a state where in Westminster there are now not only just uh, the Tories and the Labour Party, there is now 
the English MPs and the Scottish MPs. There are two nations present in that chamber. There are two parliaments represented in that chamber, the English Parliament and the Scottish Parliament sitting as it does in Westminster because of the Act of Union. But we also have our own parliament already open, reconvened again after hundreds of years of being kept held in abeyance because of the Union. It's open again. And that was the first step. The first opening of the door to independence was the creation of that parliament. And now we're at a stage where we have to vote because we have no choice left. Uh, the English government and the English uh, MPs have left. There's no choice. England wants to leave Europe. Scotland wants to stay in Europe. There's only one choice to make here. We either uh, become independent or we go down with the UK ship. And as far as I'm concerned, it's never been a question uh, that I would be surprised anybody ever asked me which one I would choose because Scotland has been held back for the past hundred years in the Union. It's been kept down. Uh, it's been neglected. There's nothing been spent in Scotland from Westminster. All the money has been hoovered out of Scotland, sucked down to London and the South East. Half of our tax money disappears every year down there. Most of our young talent disappears off down to London because the jobs are not here because the investment has again been attracted to London and the South East. The only way we can get back uh, the young people with the talent is to create the jobs here. And we can't do that when somebody else in another country is running uh, our trade policy. All of the things which are not devolved, all of the powers which are retained in London are the very ones which would allow Scotland to get out of its current predicament. The powers over the so-called constitution, which incidentally the United Kingdom doesn't have a constitution, but Scotland does. They are the defence of the, the country. We are forced to accept nuclear missiles on our territory, even though they don't defend us. They just make us a target. We are, uh, we are forced to put up with the foreign policies of an English government which hates Europe and wants to secede from the European Union. And we are forced uh, to accept British television news, which we know is very heavily anti-independence. Everything about the British state, everything about the Union is designed to prevent Scotland from getting free. And therefore we have to invoke the very rules which were agreed by the United Kingdom at the International Court of Justice. And that means having a referendum in our own legal system, using our own laws, and deciding for ourselves whether we want uh, to, to leave Europe or not. And if we decide that we don't want to leave Europe uh, and we want to be a country again and we want to claw back that 50% of our tax money and use it uh, for the benefit of our own people, then that is up to us. But no government in England and no Prime Minister can deny that. They can talk and they can haul and they can hum and they can say, oh, well, now is not the time or you had your referendum in 2014. Irrelevant. This is not about 2014. This is about the survival of Scotland as a country and it's about the survival of Scotland's economy. Um, without independence, both of those things are going to be virtually wiped out. Brexit will see to that. Everybody at the moment that I've spoken to, and I get a lot of emails and messages from people constantly who are trying to launch their own types of crowdfunded attacks on the UK government, they won't work. The reason why I haven't promoted things like this new extra party to, to fight the Scottish elections, and the reason why I haven't uh, repeatedly tried to promote other people's ideas for crowdfunding, for example, a legal battle to force the British government to give us a Section 30 order is because we don't need to do any of these things. We simply need to hold a referendum and that's always been the case. Uh, and under, as I say, the International Court of Justice and under agreed uh, rules which the British government helped to shape, we have the right to self-determination at any time we like under our own legal system without recourse to asking permission from any other country whatsoever. And we've always had this right. It's never, been, it's never gone away. We don't have to have a legal battle over it. All we need to do is have a referendum. If we vote to become independent, fine. Then we declare our independence and we ask the, the United Nations and the European Union and the rest of the world to recognise us. And we wait. And we see just how many of our friends and allies 
outside of the UK come to our aid. I'll bet you the very first people who recognise Scotland as a country will be the Republic of Ireland. After that, probably the European Union. After that, probably the rest of the world. And then, probably after all of that, eventually England. But we cannot be uh, prevented from voting by anybody. That's not a democracy. If we allow Boris Johnson to dictate the timescale of this, this is we're basically pandering to a dictator who's making the rules for us. It's always been the same. We've always got to wait for the British government to decide when we can do things. Well, let's stop doing that, right? It's about time we stood up and said, no, we're not going to do things to your time scale anymore. We've had enough of that. You're dragging us to a place that we don't want to go. And you would have seen yesterday the very combative stance taken by Ian Blackford when he said, we will have a referendum whether you like it or not, and we will be a free country yet again, a European state again. He made the point very forcefully yesterday. So I believe the gloves are about to come off. We've got 21 days till Brexit. I believe that the SNP will wait till virtually Brexit day to announce the timing of the referendum. If it was me, that's what I would do. These are my suppositions, okay? My opinions, not facts. So don't take my word for it. Let's wait and see. But if you're wondering why I haven't taken up uh, the cause of uh, crowdfunding, you know, all kinds of uh, appeals to the British government or legal actions against them, it's just simply because we don't need to do that. Um, we can save our money and use it for something better after we're independent. But let's just get the bloody referendum done. That's what it's about now. Never mind get Brexit done. Let's get the referendum done and get our independence before Brexit sucks us down with it. And that is the end of this broadcast today. Go to the march tomorrow. The weather's going to be crap, but let's not worry about that. Dress for the weather. It's not going to be cold, but it's going to be windy and very wet uh, right up till about 1 or 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And then it's supposed to clear. So wet weather gear on, everybody. And wrap up warm. Take something to eat with you. Uh, and make sure you have somewhere to go at the end of the march so that you've prepared your exit plan. But let's get out there and march. Remember, the more we are seen on the streets, the less effect British television news has on the population because the people see us when we're on the streets of the city. If we sit at home in our armchairs and think we can never affect any change, then nothing will happen. The marches are just as important as the political moves. So get out there and march tomorrow. See you later. Bye-bye.